Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to another daily Q&A. Now, before we get into today's question, which is about polyp extension and coral growth, uh, I just want to give you guys a quick update. Tomorrow, I'm going in to get some work done. I'm uh, going to be getting some fake teeth put into my face, which is pretty nice. Uh, I've got some, some stuff missing for many, many years and uh, they have to do a bunch of work. So I'm not sure if my face is gonna be the size of a softball on Wednesday. So uh, I wanna get a video out today and I might record a second one just so I have something later in the week. But either way, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to create any more content. Uh, but if you see videos popping up Wednesday, Thursday, then, well, I was able to create it. Now, uh, yeah, it does kind of put a damper on my training given the BJJ competition coming up uh, in like two weeks on the 22nd. So taking an entire week off from training right before the fights is not something that I want to do, but this is the only time I can get in to get this work done. So it is what it is. Uh, on top of that, I am adding some new CO2 attachments uh, for the uh, website. So if you guys didn't see my post on uh, YouTube this morning, uh, I'm basically offering you guys a hundred bucks promo code uh, for anybody who can send me in a model that I don't currently have on the website. A few people emailed me this morning. I have updated those uh, currently on the website. I think we have like 46 right now, uh, total or different models of CO2 attachments for the skimmers. And uh, yeah, so check there. If you don't see your model, go ahead and email me and uh, we'll set it up and you can send it in. You'll get a free hundred bucks off your next order. So uh, anyways, with all that said, let's go to move on to today's question, which is from Ozzyman31982. Uh, he says, regarding SPS, uh, are growth and polyp extension independent of each other? Question mark. I have a green slimer frag growing visibly daily, bright green, uh, bright uh, growth tips, etc., and polyp extension is just okay. Uh, when I bought it about a month ago, uh, there weren't really growth tips, but very tiny ones. Uh, but uh, it was much shaggier than it ever than I've ever seen it. Uh, new to SPS, going great so far. I think I caught the bug. So basically, he wants to know kind of uh, does polyp extension and growth kind of go together? Now I'll tell you right now that uh, I have bought corals in the past that come from tanks that had um, you know a ton of polyp extension and then put them in here to this specific setup and they shrunk up, but the growth continued much faster than the previous tank. It's, I think it really comes down to a couple things. Your nutrient levels, how intense your lighting is, how long your lighting is on, and uh, flow. All those things are playing a role in polyp extension and growth. Of course, alkalinity is a big thing as too, is if you're having alkalinity spikes and fluctuations and it's not very stable, of course, that's gonna put a damper on both of those. But with that said, I find that tanks that have higher nutrients less flow and less light intensity have more polyp extension. I don't know exactly why that is, but I've seen it not only in tanks that I've had in the past, like the little uh, bio cube that I had, it had less light, less flow, but polyp extension was really good in that tank. Again, these are the same frags that came out of the 300 I put in that tank. The polyp extension was much better. And then uh, I've seen it on client tanks as well. So I know in this display here, the polyp extension is is decent. I mean, it's not horrible. It's there. You can see it on the millies. It looks decent. Um, but I know that the flow is is pretty intense in here. The par is pretty intense. And then, you know, alkalinity is, you know, that 995 is pretty stable. So not really too much to worry about. And again, my nutrients do fluctuate pretty, you know, they do fluctuate quite a bit in this system, given that I'm shipping coral all the time from here. We got the low boys here. It's just kind of part of the whole incorporating your main display into your business and trying to uh, ship and all that kind of stuff. But with that said, I feel that if you are uh, getting good growth, the polyp extension is pretty decent. I mean, it still looks good. It's still a fuzzy coral, and uh, you're happy with that and the coloration and the growth, then just leave it the way it is. Uh, if you want to try to change some things in the tank, I would say uh, maybe lower your light intensity just a little bit. I mean, get, again, if you're going to make changes to your tank, don't do them all at one time. Just kind of go slow and kind of see how the corals react over a period of time. So if you wanted to just try something out, go ahead and just lower the light a little bit, maybe by 10 or 20%, and then give that a couple weeks to see how the corals react. If you want to go from there and then change your nutrient levels, again, be consistent with your testing to make sure that they're not fluctuating too much, and then see how that reacts. And then, you know, just kind of pick and choose and move some things around. Again, taking the time to see how the tank reacts to those changes, and then just go from there and make your decision on how you wanna run your tank, opposed to how your corals look. For me personally, having a tank that doesn't have the best polyp extension, but has a ton of growth, is just good for me because of the business aspect of it. Um, now, if it was just a display tank that I really wasn't fragging that much, or really didn't depend on paying my bills with, then I would just 
Uh, I would have lower light intensity just because I, I mean, I don't want the tank to become a, a giant jungle and have to, you know, tear it apart or have Big Bertha destroying it again. But um, I would lower the light intensity. I wouldn't have a ton of flow and I would keep my nutrients relatively, you know, medium to high just because I get a little bit better coloration with higher nutrients and uh, the poly extension will always be nice. So it just depends on what you're looking to do with your main display tank and how you want your tank to grow. If you want it to grow out really, really fast and you want to fill up the glass and you want to, you know, make some money on some frags, then uh, you know, medium nutrients, lots of flow, lots of light, and, uh, you know, just let it go, right? Uh, but again, there's trade-offs to everything, right? Just like in life. But with that second, hopefully that answers your question. Um, if it didn't, then just let me know below, and I'll try to kind of maybe I'll make another video going a little bit farther into it. But that's basically what I see when it comes to polyp extension and growth and how they compare to each other. So... With that said, hopefully you guys have a good week. I will do my best to get some more content out for you. If not, you can always uh, you know, hit me up with questions here, and I will do my best to answer those next week when I'm able to you know, move my face and uh, make some content. But, uh, yeah, so if you want to support the channel, head over to fishofhex.com. Uh, use the promo code WELCOMEBACK for 5% off, and I'll see you guys later. All right, peace.